See, look at that. And these frames were all empty before, <clears throat> so they are killing it right now. Do you guys want to see something beautiful? Oh my gosh. Look at how white that comb is. Is that not just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Wow. Look at that beautiful white comb. The flows here are absolutely insane. Like, they are really blowing my mind. Ooh, that's different. All right, before I leave, I have to get supers on all of these because also these hives have been queenless, so they have nothing else to do right now. They don't have brew to feed. All they got to do is just collect, 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 and store, store, store. My phone's gonna be so sticky now. But like, see how fat this is? Like, woo wee! That is beautiful. We are definitely on the flow right now. Okay, so I know this title sounds really scary, so let me start by telling you the good news first. So there are two groups called the AHPA, the American Honey Producers Association, and the ABF, the American Beekeepers Federation. And both of these groups are currently right now going up to bat to help fight against some of the issues that we are having in the beekeeping industry. So, okay. What am I even talking about? What is under attack with honey? So if you're an experienced beekeeper, then you have probably seen over the years that there has been some trouble with having adulterated or fake honey, I will call it, coming across the border into the United States and being sold on our markets. But if you're new to beekeeping, let me catch you up to speed real fast. So honey is being brought in by other countries that was never actually made by bees. So what they're doing is they'll have a little bit of honey that they then start mixing together with other syrups like corn syrup, rice syrup, and other derivatives of highly, highly sugar containing syrups. Um, so yes, it may have a little bit of honey in it, but it's not actual honey. It's watered down honey with all of these fake things. And then they'll sell it on our shelves in grocery stores and they'll say that it's 100% real, raw, or unfiltered honey. And they're able to get around a lot of this with different loopholes because of that main ingredient of honey that they even had in there to begin with. Let alone, we currently don't have a lot of methods in place to test that honey to make sure that it's completely real and there's not anything else in it as well. But on top of that, there are many different honey packaging facilities all over the United States. I didn't know this until around a year ago when actually one of the customers of the factory that I was working at was a honey packaging distributor. And I was like, what is that? And I started looking into it and I was like, oh my gosh, that is not good. So what they are is they're, they bring in honey from all over the world and they bring it into their facility and they package it here in the United States and call it United States Raw Honey. Um, but if you turn it around and you look at the back of it, most of the time it'll say this honey came from Argentina or Spain or China and all these other different countries. Um, there's actually one brand, I don't mean to put them on blast, but I was in Walmart and this was back when I didn't have um, that much honey when I first started beekeeping. And I picked up this, um, this thing of, this jar of honey, well it was like a plastic bottle of honey and um it said great lakes honey on it and so i was like oh hey it's from like all of like the midwest beekeepers right buy it bring it home i'm using it and i'm like this tastes really off and really weird so i turned around and it says this honey is a product of argentina and spain and i'm like why are they calling it great lakes honey when it never came from the great lakes so it's things like that that they do to kind of like trick the consumer into buying their product and it is not cool whatsoever so that's what's happening with fake honey coming into the united states and the reason that this is so bad is because because all of this fake honey is coming in, it is now lowering the price 
that real beekeepers can sell their honey for because all of this fake honey is way cheaper than normal real honey is because of all those fake syrups that are in it. They are a lot easier and cheaper to produce. So in order to stay competitive, a lot of big beekeepers, they have to lower their prices just so that other um, like stores and other packagers will actually buy their product to begin with. So I remember hearing that the price for honey has gone down quite a bit. So I decided to do a quick little dive to see just how much it's actually gone down. So here's a chart that I found that adjusts it for just normal inflation because of course back in like the 1970s our dollar was worth way more than it is right now. Um, and it looks like it has gone down. It's not quite as low as it has been. It, a lot of people have been doing a lot of work on it to get it to up to where it is now. But it's interesting to see that in this chart, U.S. imports of honey have surged by 73% in the last 10 years. We're bringing in so much honey from so many other countries that are not our own. To the point that there's even websites explaining how to spot fake honey. And then I was reading this article and it says that it is claimed that factories in China are making more honey than the entire bee population in the world. How does that even make sense? And then there's this chart that I thought would be really helpful just to kind of like visualize for you guys showing what are the top producers of honey in the entire world with China at the very top and the United States generally hanging out around like 6th to 10th place depending on what source you're looking at. So as a beekeeper, it's already kind of hard with everything you have coming at you, especially when you get to the commercial level in beekeeping with um, varroa mites, tropolalis mites, fake honey, all the other laws and regulations around bees, plus pesticides. There's just so much coming at you that it's really hard for a lot of big pee a lot of big beekeepers to stay profitable and sometimes they're just breaking even from year to year so pair that with now not being able to sell their number one product for as much as it's actually worth it really hurts the beekeepers in the end of the day so the whole reason why I'm even talking about this is because I was reading this article in the American Bee Journal. If you don't have this, I would highly recommend you subscribing to it because there is so much information that comes out in um, their, monthly, their monthly magazine updating you on all the new stuff in the beekeeping industry, any new techniques, any troubling things that we're struggling with. And the article that I came across um, talks about exactly this. It's by Charles Linder. He is a commercial beekeeper here in the Midwest, actually. Um, maybe I'll try to talk to him um, on here. But um, in it, he was talking about, so back to those two beekeeping associations that I was talking about. So the good news is, is these associations are trying to put a stop to a lot of things. But after reading everything that he said in this article, um, I would definitely recommend reading it for yourself. But after reading everything he said, it really sounds like both of those federations are really having a hard time with funding and also being organized to actually stand a chance when they go up to the board with legislation and trying to get all of these things changed um let alone there's also like time windows with like timing and whatnot of when they're actually able to talk about these things and push for the, the and push for these things so right now one of the things they're pushing for is called the hive act standing for honey identification, verification, and enforcement. Pretty much asking the FDA to establish a protocol to check all honey that does come across the border. Now, from what he's saying, there's most likely gonna be a lot of pushback on this just because this is gonna be extra steps that they're gonna have to take and extra work that they are gonna have to do. And most of the time, they're not up for that. And also they're hoping to fight for having all of these things that I'm talking about listed on the bottle so that the consumer knows. So like I said, they don't have to list on there that there are bee-free 
products in this in this honey also they don't have to be really straightforward with where the honey comes from they want you to have to do the digging to figure it out otherwise they're trying to deceive you with the front label making you think that hey this is local honey when really it isn't and it should also be listed on the label what in, in the ingredient label what is actually in that product it blows my mind that they're actually able to get away with just saying that the only thing in here is honey when as a beekeeper you taste it and you 100% know there's other syrups in it if you had real honey try store-bought honey and compare the two and you will definitely be able to see the store-bought honey tends to have or the fake honey tends to have um a lot sweeter of an aftertaste that hangs around for a while and you would think that honey is generally sticky but these fake honey is actually even stickier than normal honey normal honey should be able to like rub between your fingers um and yes be sticky but almost be you get like the wax in it as well and also store-bought honey have you ever noticed that it doesn't crystallize you would think that it would considering that it's probably traveled on some trucks for a very long ways just to even get to that store and I guarantee those trucks do not keep the inside warm. It's probably pretty cold, especially in the winter time. But you never see crystallized honey on the shelves at the store. And we all know as beekeepers that when you have honey, it crystallizes very quickly. That is like the number one thing we're always trying to like keep it from doing. Um, but honestly, I don't mind crystallized honey. I actually think it tastes better. But anyways, so these are all things you can look at with the honey to make your own judgment and come up with your own opinion on the whole entire situation. I just want to bring awareness to what is going on and kind of help give um, Charles Linden a voice or Linder, sorry, Charles Linder a voice in what he's talking about because he talks about some amazing things in this article and some really big problems that we're facing here in beekeeping right now. And if we don't all unite and stand up together, then there's going to be some really big changes coming in the beekeeping industry. One of the things being he had, while he was writing this article, he had just received an email from I believe it was the USDA saying that currently beekeeping when it comes to like all the products that you buy with beekeeping it's all regulated by EPA but it's soon going to be transferred over to being regulated by the FDA and with that comes a lot of changes one of those being that if you want to treat for mites you're going to have to go and have a vet actually prescribe you those mite treatments. They're going to make everything over the counter um, when it comes to like formic and oxalic and a couple, a lot of the other mite treatments that we do use today. And it's not going to be as easily accessible to be a beekeeper. This is not a good thing for the industry. So I just want to bring awareness to the issues that are going on. Um, and kind of get your guys' wheels turning and start looking into these things and start st like standing together and speaking out. Because from what I'm seeing, there's a lot of distance between commercial beekeepers, backyard beekeepers, sideline beekeepers. It's like we're all segregated, segregated into our own groups, even YouTubers. And we are all doing the same thing and trying to help the thing that we love, bees and beekeeping. So why not come together and create a voice so that we can stand up to these boards and be like, hey, listen to us, please help. Like this is not gonna work for beekeepers and it's gonna really hurt the beekeeping industry. But okay, I'll get off my soapbox now and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and don't quit and be fit.